Hello there guys, welcome back to another Epic and Extrable Maths video. In this video we've got a very, very difficult problem involving a shape. It's a triangle, okay? It's a triangle, we get given some stuff. Let me just break down what we have in case it's not clear. So we have an angle here of alpha, we have an angle here of theta. This length from here to here is 2a, and this length from here to here is a. The question is to find theta. And also they give us that tan alpha, they tell us tan alpha is three quarters. What is theta equal to? It's a hard question. Maybe pause it, have a go, think about it, see if you can get any working out on there, any progress. Um, and um, if not, then let's do it together right now. Okay, so the first thing that we should do is find the length from this point here to this point here, okay? So maybe I'll call this uh, this point here capital A and I'll call this point here capital B and we want to find the length of AB. How should we do that? Well we can use the cosine rule of course because we get given an angle, a length and another length. So the length of BC squared is equal to A squared plus 2A squared uh, minus 2 times a times 2a times cos alpha. Okay, that's the cosine rule. Now, we don't know what cos alpha is just yet, but we could do a little bit of simplifying. So we have a squared plus this 2a and then squared is 4a squared. So a squared plus 4a squared is 5a squared. Okay, and then 2 times a times 2a, that's going to be a 4a squared. And then we have cos alpha again. Let's work out what cos alpha is then. Now, you can do this whole question without a calculator. So technically, you could try and mess about with a calculator and you could probably, you, I mean, you would, you would get the, the value of cos alpha, but let's do it without a calculator. How do we do that? Well, guys, in general, if you get given one trig ratio, like tan alpha equals three quarters or cos alpha equals this or sine alpha equals that, you can find the other two. So if we get given tan alpha is three over four, you can always find the other two, sine alpha and cos alpha in this case, without a calculator. How do you do it? Well, you draw a right angle triangle like this. We label this side alpha and we know that tan alpha is 3 over 4. So if there is a right angle triangle that satisfies that, which of course there is, then this side would have to be 3 and this side would have to be 4 because of Sokotoa, okay? Tan is opposite over adjacent, so in this triangle, hopefully we all agree, tan alpha would be 3 over 4. Cool. Now, we can just find sine alpha and cos alpha using this. How can we do that? Well, we can use Pythagoras to work out that the hypotenuse is 5, okay? Because 3 squared plus 4 squared is 25, and 25 is 5 squared, so a squared plus b squared equals c squared. It's a Pythagorean triple. And then cos alpha is easy to work out because cos is adjacent over hypotenuse, so 4 over 5. And I'm just going to, while we're here, I'm going to write that sine alpha, which is opposite over hypotenuse, must be 3 over 5. So now we have them both in case we need sine alpha later. Okay, so the length BC squared is 5A squared minus 4a squared times cos alpha, which is 4 over 5. Okay, and what is that? Well, that's 5a squared minus, this is 16a squared over 5. So I'm going to write this as 25a squared over 5 minus 16a squared over 5, just so that they have the same denominator. And this is 9a squared over 5. Okay, and that's the length squared so the length of BC, just on its own, would be 3A over the square root of 5. Okay, so this length here is 3A divided by the square root of 5. Okay, cool. Now, why did we do that? Well, now we can use the sine rule, can't we? Because we have an angle on a side. And then what I'm thinking is if we find what this angle here is, maybe I'll call this beta for a second. If we find this and we find this, then we'll know what this is because the sides inside a triangle add up to 180. And do you see that theta and whatever this angle here is 
must add up to 180 as well. So as long as we can find beta, we're kind of almost, we're pretty much done, pretty much. So let's find beta. There's a bit, there's gonna be a bit of simplifying after that, but let's find beta. So how do we do that? Well, we use the sine rule. So we have sine of beta divided by A is equal to sine alpha divided by 3A over root 5. Okay, so let's simplify this. Sine beta over A is equal to sine alpha, we already worked that out luckily a moment ago, that's 3 fifths, divided by 3A over root 5. Okay, and that looks pretty gross. So maybe let's times both sides by A. So that gives us that just sine beta on its own is equal to 3A over 5 divided by 3A over root 5. Okay, and then hopefully you can see that the three A's would cancel out. And then we have one over five divided by one over root five. And if we multiply the top and the bottom of that fraction by root five, then we would have root five over five. Okay, cool. So that's what sine beta is. So we know because again, the three sides inside of a triangle add up to 180 degrees. We know that alpha plus beta plus this angle here, this angle here would have to be 180 minus theta, wouldn't it? So plus 180 minus theta should equal 180, okay? And then cancelling 180 out from both sides, we have that alpha plus beta is theta. And then of course we are moving theta to the other side. So theta, which is what we are trying to find, is just alpha plus beta. But we know that alpha is arctan three over four, and we know that beta is huh, arc sine root five over five. That's not that great. I mean, technically it's the answer, but it's a bit boring to say that theta is arc tan of something plus arc sine of something else. That's just gross. So what can we do? Well, wouldn't it be nice if we could just write it as arc tan of one thing maybe? I don't know, just a bit simpler than arc tan three over four plus arc, san, arc sine root five over five, disgusting. Well, why don't we do this? Why don't we draw another right angle triangle, um, find what tan of beta is, and then do arc tan of that, why not? So here's another right angle triangle, but this time it's to find beta, or the, uh, the trig ratios involved in beta, rather than the, the ones in alpha. So sine of beta is root five over five, sine is opposite over hypotenuse, so this is root five, and this is five. Okay, and then using Pythagoras again, if I just call this x for a second, then we have the x squared plus root five squared, so just five, is equal to five squared, which is 25. So x squared is uh, 25 minus five, which is 20. And that means that x is the square root of 20. Uh, but the square root of 20 is the square root of four times five, which is two root five. So I'm gonna say that x is two root five, okay? And then I want, I want arc tan of beta, not arc sine. So um, tan of beta is opposite over adjacent, so root five over two um, root five. So in other words, tan beta is equal to one over two because the root five and the root five cancel out. Okay, so basically what we have is that theta is equal to alpha, um, which is arctan of three over four, arctan of three over four, plus beta, which we can write as arctan of a half. So plus arctan of a half. Now this is, a bit better, I guess, because at least it's an arctan and an arctan. But guys, there's an even nicer way of writing this, okay? So what I'm going to do, and just stay with me for a moment, is I'm going to take tan of both sides. So tan theta is equal to tan of arctan three over four plus arctan one over two. 
Okay, close bracket. Now, you might say, why have you done that? Well, actually, guys, this right-hand side simplifies in a very, very devious way. Okay, and that's because using the compound angle formula, tan of A plus B, okay, is equal to tan A plus tan B divided by 1 minus tan A times tan, let me just get rid of this arrow here, tan B, okay? So we can use that. Now, how do we use that? Well, tan of something plus something, we can write like this, but in this case, capital A is arctan of three over four, and capital B is arctan of one over two, but we, we do tan of A and tan of B, but we're doing tan of arctan, which is really nice, right, because they cancel out. So hopefully you can see that we're going to have tan theta is equal to tan of arctan 3 over 4, so just 3 over 4, plus tan of arctan 1 over 2, so 1 over 2, divided by 1 minus, again, tan of arctan 3 over 4, so just 3 over 4, times tan of arctan of 1 over 2, so a half, okay? So we have 3 over 4 plus a half divided by 1 minus 3 over 4 times a half, okay? Now, what can we do? Well, maybe let's just simplify this slightly. So 3 over 4 plus 1 over 2 is 3 over 4 plus 2 over 4. So 5 over 4 divided by 1 minus, this is 3 over 8. Okay. Forgive my slightly questionable handwriting. And then if we just times the top and the bottom of this fraction by maybe 8, just to get rid of all the fractions, 5 over 4 times 8 would be 10. And then 1 times 8 is 8, and then 3 eighths times 8 is 3, so like this. And then, of course, 8 minus 3 is number 5, so we have 10 divided by 5, which is the number 2. And that's basically it, guys, because we have tan theta equals 2. So the final answer, I'll write it here, is that theta is arc tan of 2. That's the answer. I'm just writing it here because there's nowhere else to write it. That's it. Hopefully that makes sense because we have tan theta equals 2. So theta is arc tan of 2. Pretty cool question, right? A lot of simplifying, a lot of stuff. We had to use the cosine rule. We had to use the sine rule. We had to do two triangles to work out the ratios without a calculator. We had to do a lot of stuff. And then we, of course, used the addition or compound angle formulae. Quite a lot of stuff for uh, not saying the question looked easy, but slightly more innocent looking than it actually was, right? Anyways, guys, as always, thank you so much for watching. I highly appreciate it. Please let me know if you want to see more videos like this, and I'll see you in the next one. Cheers.